Alright, so in this video I'm using VMware Workstation and what I'm going to show you guys is how to actually have CentOS minimal install server edition um, as a VM on VMware Workstation. You can use the same techniques to even do it on VMware Player and it should just work fine. Now, um, okay, I'm going to pause this video for a moment because I had to first copy the ISO from my hard disk to my local machine for CentOS 7. So, just a moment. Alright, so the ISO is copying to my desktop. Um, it's going to take some time because I'm copying it over my NAS, Network Access Storage. Um, but that's okay. So, meanwhile, we'll go ahead and create a VM and we'll see how to allot the RAM and the hard disk space and everything. Um, so let me go to file and say a new virtual machine. You can even press ctrl n for that. That's the keyboard shortcut I'm not sure if it's available on VMware player, but it works with workstation So for new virtual machine wizard now I'm going to say custom advanced just to see what all options does it give me uh, Although I'm not going to mess with it much Okay, I'll just leave it as it is now over here I have the option to select the disk image ISO that I want to. Um, if I want, I'm actually copying it right now to my desktop so it won't be available yet. So I'm not going to select it for the time being. I'll just say I will install the operating system later and I'll go to next. Um, the guest operating system, this means the operating system that we are installing as a VM. Um, I'll select Linux and CentOS 64 bit because that is the one that I'm doing. Um, just if you guys want to know which one I am installing, I'll let you know. It's CentOS 7. So, this is the one that I'm installing right now. You can even download it from here if you want to. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay, the internet seems to be a little slow. Alright, the internet is really slow guys, I'm really sorry. Um, we'll continue with the video and once it opens, we'll come back to it in a moment or so. Okay, so CentOS 7 is what I'm going to install and I'll just select that, CentOS 64-bit and that's the architecture I'm using. I'll say next. Um, now you can give machine name whatever you want. Because I already have CentOS 64-bit, um, I'm using it. I'm going to name this one as underscore backup. Um, I'm actually going to delete it after this video. Uh, I don't want to keep it, so I'm just naming it something different so that I can differentiate. Simple. Uh, you can select the location where you want the virtual machine's hard disk to be saved. Um, the actual hard disk that you'll be using as virtual machine's drive. So I'll just leave it by default, but whatever you want, you can select it. And then I'll go to next. Now it says how many processors and cores per processor. If you are way too technical, you would already know what to do with these things. But generally, I would say for CentOS minimal install, one processor and one core per processor is completely okay. You don't really need much. Uh, for RAM, I'm going to allot it 512 MB. That's half a gig. Because that's just enough for the server installation. We are not going to do hardcore GUI and all that in this one. We will just have the minimal install. So we will only have the uh, console through it so that we can log in using the root or whatever username we want to. I will do next again. Um, network connection. Okay. Uh, this one we are going to leave as it is. Use network ad address translation. Uh, we will be using another one as well. So we will leave this one for now. Um, leave it the by default one LSI logic no need to make any changes to that SCSI is okay again no need to make any changes in that and it says create a new virtual disk if you already have a virtual disk or if you want to use a physical disk you can do that but I'm just going to simply go ahead and create a new virtual disk so it says the maximum drive uh, disk size now um, if you un 
keep this particular option which is allocate all disk space now unchecked what this will do is it will only allot the space um, that the VM the virtual machine actually needs so eventually as you download more stuff on your VM you install more applications on your VM on your virtual machine it will keep on growing so this is this is called dynamically allocated disk space and that is actually good if you allocate all, all of the disk space now um, what happens is that it, it takes up the entire 20 gigs on your hard drive straight away and I would say you don't really need to do that you can leave it to dynamic and let it allocate the space as it needs um, have the split virtual disk into multiple files that's the good thing uh, so that if you want to move your virtual machine to another computer or another hard disk you can uh, move it easily because you won't have very large files in gigs so that's actually a good one but if you are behind the performance if you want hardcore performance from your VM if you're going to use it for very uh, intense task which demands a lot of performance and speed I would say go for a single file store virtual disk as a single file um, it's not so in my case so I'll just keep it split virtual disk into multiple files I'll go to next um, now it's asking me the name of the file I'm again going to leave it as vm name dot vmdk is the extension so I'm just going to leave it like that and click next and these are the options that we just had selected and I'll say finish so now over here we have a new VM now right now there's nothing in it um, so it's actually a blank VM with just some space allocated so we are going to go in its settings um, in the CD I'm going to use the ISO image which has now been copied to my desktop so I'm going to browse to it and go to desktop and select this particular ISO and say open and click on OK um, okay before that uh, we have NAT I'm going to add two other network adapters um, I'll say network adapter next this one I'm going to give bridged and say replace physical network okay uh, just bridged and the other one uh, network adapter I'm going to say host only okay um, these things I did simply because if I want to access this particular VM using something like putty uh, putty is a way where you can get the shell the command line of your VM uh, on your host machine so I can use Windows to access my VM uh, using something like putty I can SSH secure shell into my CentOS 7 server I have even saved it over here uh, I can just load these settings this was the last time I had the local IP of my CentOS server and then I can just click on open and that will go ahead and get me the command line shell now if this is all gibberish to you forget it um, you don't need extra network adapters just leave it as it is you can just highlight them again just click remove and it will be gone and that's it so I'll say okay fine so now we have the ISO you can say it says using file uh, C drive users and my ISO file on desktop um, if you are curious which version I'm using of CentOS 7 you can see the file name CentOS 7.0-1406 x86-64 dvd.iso that's the actual version of CentOS 7 if you download the new one now you will actually have a more later version with more updates to what we what I will have to download separately already downloaded for you already slipstreamed into the ISO for you so that you don't have to download those updates separately anyways lots of it now let's just go ahead and power on the virtual machine okay so I'm powering on this virtual machine okay so now it gives me the option to install CentOS 7 or test this media and install CentOS 7 um, I'm going to say install CentOS 7 straight away um, test this media option is good if you are using a CD because you first want to check whether the CD is actually okay the compact disc in case of any scratches or something it might not be operable very easily um, there could be some errors so you can just first test this media in that case but because I'm using ISO it's already on my disk I'm using an SSD that's going to be much faster so I'll just say install CentOS 7 just highlight that um, and just press enter
okay so it says press enter to begin the installation process I'm again and press enter and it has begin the installation process so it's installing all right so there we have now in language I'll select English English United States that's the default one I'm just going to leave it like that continue so keyboard because I'm using English US I'll say that uh, language support again US installation is local media and software installation is minimal install um, I'm going to say um, along with minimal install I will do I'll do development and creative okay this thing I'm doing only for my own sake um, if you actually want a minimal install even that is okay I can just say development tools because I'm going to use this machine for development that is the reason why I'm doing all these things uh, but this is not actually needed so I'm just, once you have selected the libraries in the type of installation you want to do if you are using CentOS 7 or if you are using actually Linux for the first time ever I highly recommend you do genome desktop um, that is because it will give you a proper GUI and everything it will feel much like a Windows operating system and you can wander around and play with it and see how things work and so on so for now I'm going to do minimal install because that's the topic for this video and I'll say done okay that's done now it says installation destination um, I'm going to select this particular hard disk that we created um, for partitioning I'll just leave it to automatically configure partitioning I don't want to encrypt my data but if I want I can do it and this will then be done forever there is no way to undo it and the VM will be a little bit slow when you have encrypted your data so if you are using it for some high security related tasks or something you might want to encrypt your data otherwise you can just leave it unchecked okay and now I'll say done again now it says okay what happened no disk selected all right okay uh, it says network and hostname not connected so I'm going to turn on all these network adapters that I added for me it is three because I have three network adapters for you it might be one um, because if you have just one network adapter that's okay that's not a problem just click done so all of the options are selected nothing is uh, red marked or yellow marked you must make sure of that once that is done just go to begin installation now it says root password is not set I'm going to set that now I'll just enter my password alright so I have set the root password now I don't want to create any other user apart from root so I'm not creating a new user but if you want you can create that new user from here you just go to this user creation window enter the name username and the password and if you want to make this particular user uh, administrator you just need to check that I'm not going to do it so I'm leaving it as it is so it has installed uh, started installing all the libraries you can see that it has more than 400 ones uh, I'm going to pause this video till this is done so that you guys just don't have to wait and see this going on installing it um, I'll be back in a moment thanks alright so while this is actually installing it's still some libraries to go um, 50 something so uh, this page is actually opened finally uh, my internet is quite slow I'm really sorry for that so this is the one that I have right now DVD ISO um, you can actually just click on it and it will start downloading immediately this is going to be a large file over a few GB's so if you're on a slow connection like me you might want to prefer going by a torrent just download the torrent and leave it to download um, it will take some time but eventually it will be done 
or if you want to try some alternate download methods you can even go over here and download in alternate manner what I'm using is CentOS 7 x86 64 and this is the exact version that I'm using right now um, so this is the one that I'm using if I just click on this it will give me the country wise download links and I can download from any of them um, I would suggest the best way is to just download from this link or via torrent based on if you have a high speed connection DVD ISO is great or if you have a low speed connection or an unreliable connection which keeps on disconnecting every now and then go via torrent so this is the one that I'm using um, let's see alright so it seems the libraries are done it's now performing some post installation setup tasks let's do it um, again I'm just gonna pause this video till this thing completely finishes and I'll be back in a moment okay so now it says CentOS is now successfully installed and ready to use we just need to reboot our system I'll just go ahead and say reboot alright so it's rebooting let us wait for a few moments so now I have the option to use CentOS Linux or the rescue option I'll just use the default one CentOS and that's the one you should actually use so it's loading um, forget all these errors that it gives you input output errors and so on it's nothing to do much so that's it now there you go I have the set OS in, uh, 7 installed over here so it says localhost login um, localhost is my network domain name and all that um, I can just say root that's the user I created it will ask me for my password I'll enter the password that I created and I'm in so now let's do list of files these are the files that I have currently in this directory I'll go to cd slash home nothing is there in home um, let me go ahead and create a directory make the deep ls now I have a directory called deep let me go into deep folder um, I'll say touch touch is the command to actually go ahead and create a file um, I'll say touch test.txt now if I do ls we have a test.txt um, I can put something uh, so right now if I do cat that's catenate uh, concatenate um, it will show me the contents of test.txt there's nothing in there so if I want to put in something in text.txt echo my name is deep and this is a test file to test.txt and then if I do ls uh, cat test.txt my name is deep and this is a test file I can even open it in vi yes so this is the file vi is an editor um, called Vim Improved. Uh, it's a cool editor, mainly used by developers and system administrators. You might want to try it. If you actually did just VI uh, to open a file, to come out of it, you have to press colon. Colon is normally above the semicolon next to the L key on your keyboard. So you have to press shift and then the button which has colon on top. And then press Q. Q stands for quit. Uh, so you can see over here it says um, colon and Q once that is done press enter and you are out of it now so I was uh, mentioning about adding extra networks um, the reason I did that is because now um, using one of the extra networks I can actually go into my VM um, and access it using something like putty SSH so let me try that so the IP uh, for my VM is 192.168.107.130 so I run putty and over here I'll put the IP which is 192.168.107.130 and say open so now it says that is not cached and security alert and all that just say yes so it has connected to that particular uh, machine which is this VM over here it says login as it is asking me for the username I'll say root 
now it says that what's the password that you want to uh, put in I'll enter my password and there you go I'm inside the same machine using my local machine now so I can actually minimize um, everything so I'm using uh, putty on my Windows machine and accessing it as if I am using my command line so now if I do ls uh, okay I go to cd slash home I have my the same deep directory uh, that test.txt file I can open that test.txt there you go so basically that's how you do minimal install if you're using a VMware workstation if you want to install CentOS 7 or whatever version of CentOS or in fact any version of Linux OS so that was it for this particular video guys that was a long one and thank you for staying put if you made it till the end of this video thanks a lot and do stay, in, stay tuned for more there's much more to come uh, if there are any queries any concerns you might want to uh, you have um, please do share them in comments and I'll try to address them as much as possible once again thanks a lot for watching this video if you have not already subscribed to my channel please do so now that will really encourage me to create more such videos and stay tuned for more